JFK Reloaded, 2004. JF now, the, whoever made this, you know you dead wrong. You know you dead wrong for that. JFK Reloaded? Yo, what are these games? Uh, oh my God. Oh my God. Duh. <laughs> The most controversial video games. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to boy Tuh. We're going back and looking at some of the oldies but goodies. I do also want to check on the, uh, check the, uh, what is it? I think it was like another YouTube iceberg. I think there was like a part two or something like that. So I want to go check that one. I want to check that one out eventually. If y'all want that, make sure you let me know. But the most controversial video games, man. Now you guys might be wondering why I am so happy well, there's a lot of great stuff happening right now. Not only is Mr. Sonic the Hedgehog going to be in the background for this video because we're talking about video games, but also Yo, we hit 700,000. I'm not going to lie. Going to be in the background for this video. This dude back here be creeping me the fuck out. Wasn't bro's hair pink? Yeah, he dies in multiple times, but there's also multiple videos. Video because we're talking about video games, but also we hit 700,000 subscribers and Cherry Soda is coming out on February 24th. Yeah. It's gonna premiere live. Before I talk about the Cherry Soda release, thank you guys so much for 700,000 subscribers. Can't wait for someone to get mad at me for saying I say thank you too much. Dude, we're getting closer and closer to a million subscribers every upload, and I can't wait for the comments. Tub used to make better content before he hit a mil. He changed after a mil. So, the song, Cherry Soda, it is my first song like actual like song song that's gonna be on streaming services and it's gonna premiere here on the channel on february 24th at 6 p.m pst also nice but i'm gonna skip a bit genre i guess yeah it's hyper pop and i can't wait for you guys to see it and i hope you guys add it to your playlist and i've always been music but i'm finally able to release it because i know you guys you guys really f with me and if you guys don't like it that's totally okay for the premiere please i've never done a premiere on my channel i don't know how many live viewers we're gonna get but please be there for the premieres notifications you guys got me oh yeah i also want to say i'm not a youtuber that's switching over to music i am a youtuber that does music as well i've always wanted to be both youtuber and an artist i am not just gonna peace youtube i'm gonna be a full-time artist no y'all are my babies all right anyway today we're gonna be talking about the most controversial video games for the most part i try to look for video games that are not really that well known so you guys have some fresh content all my sources will be linked down in the description below let's get started with the video. Night Trap, 1992. The fuck? Night Trap was a game released in 1992 designed for the Sega CD, an attachment for the Sega Genesis. The Sega CD added hardware functionality such as a faster CPU and graphic enhancements. Sega tried to match the capabilities of the competing PC Engine CD-ROM system, but failed to do oh, so. One of the, the games playable on the Sega CD was Night Trap, an interactive movie video game developed by Digital Pictures. The game is shown mainly through the use of full motion video. In this game, the player takes a role of a special agent tasked to watch over teenage girls having a sleepover and- Hold on. What the fuck? Chat, did we? I feel like I watched a video about this before. Did I watch a video about this before? I know I haven't watched his video, but I've, I've talked about- I haven't watched this video. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta make sure. I didn't watch this. I don't know what the he I've watched something that had something about this on it. Just can't think of it right now. And those girls are visiting a house, which they don't know is full of danger. The player watches live surveillance footage of the house and triggers traps. You said Simba the forget it. Bro, listen, chat. Do y'all not understand? I drop two videos a day. Every single day. That's not including two videos a day every single day that's 600 plus videos a year i've been doing this since 2017 nigga the fuck to capture anyone seen endangering the girls i mean designing a game where you're supposed to watch a bunch of underage girls having a sleepover is already pretty weird but designing a storyline where they're gonna get hurt it's a little bit uh, nah, it's not it. The player can freely switch their view between different cameras. Insert Five Nights at Freddy's reference here. To keep watch over the girls and eavesdrop on conversations to follow along the story and listen for clues. There are some pretty funny scenes in this game, I'm not gonna lie. But it was going to be a surprise. What the hell? Couldn't stand in my way, would you? No! 
Night Trap was one of two games criticized during the 1993 congressional hearings on violent video games. The other was Mortal Kombat. Public concern grew surrounding the video game after claims were made that it included an extreme amount of violence and promoted SA against women. When I say SA, it's that. I just don't want to get demonetized so yeah as a result night trap was pulled from the shelves of major video game retailers and the following month sega stopped production of the game altogether the senate hearings that revolved around night traps apparent violence resulted in the creation of the entertainment software rating board it's the oh, esr oh they so y'all think it was the resulted reason. in the creation of the entertainment soft every childhood e for everyone e for every e10 T15 M for mature. Damn, that's crazy. So they was the reason. It was you. You the reason. You was the reason for sure. For sure. Software rating board. It's the ESRB, which is still used to this day. The game was given an M for mature audiences, which means 17 years or older in the states. Super Columbine Massacre RPG. Super, huh? Super fucking what? I beg your fucking pardon? I'm sorry, Chad. I don't got my button set up. I had to rearrange some shit. So I got it. I beg your pardon myself. I beg your fucking pardon? What do you mean? That's a, they, they made that? 2005. Six years after the events that happened at Columbine High School, Danny Ladon, a video game developer, decided it would be a Niggas good idea bugging. to release an RPG PC game based around Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. In fact, he chose to release it on April 20th, 2005, which was the sixth year anniversary of the incident. Oh, he initially no. distributed the game anonymously, but after a friend of one of the victims discovered his identity, Ladon decided to come out as the creator. About 10,000 people had downloaded the game in the year since its creation. The game is no longer available on Ladon's website. Instead, it has popped up on a number of sites and download services. Ladon initially accepted donations to defray the cost of hosting the game, but stopped when he took the game off his site. He said he's making no money on the free distribution of the game. When players engage in battle, the screen changes to a first-person view of the enemy. enemy Enemies are named stereotypes or occupations such as preppy girl, janitor, math teacher, and jock type. Combat has two options, autoplay, where the game chooses the weapon to use, or manual play, in which the player decides to use a hand-to-hand -hand weapon, explosive, gun, or defensive maneuver against foes. Once a battle starts, it is impossible to avoid or escape. The player must kill the enemy or die. Text narrates battle events and actions such as finding a bag or gaining a weapon. As the game proceeds, you... flashbacks occur showing events in Eric and Dylan's lives which may have caused them to commit murder. Much of the plot is constructed around the events precisely as they are believed to have occurred. Lines of the gunman's dialogue are often lifted verbatim from their writings or from their home videos of each other. In contrast to the 16-bit graphics- Wow, look at- and then he dressed them up like, wow, that is actually insane. There are digitalized photographs from the shooting or full voice samples from news reports. Reaction to Super Columbine Massacre was extremely negative. The title was criticized as trivializing the actions of- Look at his head. He looked like somebody that would make some shit like that. Look at his head. Look at how his head is. I knew he, he you, you could tell he would do some shit like that. Come on, man. Nigga said alien built. That nigga, that nigga, not from Earth, man. <laughs> You look like somebody that would do some stupid shit like that. Of Eric and Dylan and the lives of the innocent. The hate was so much so that Ladon ended up removing the game altogether from his website. You know what sucks, guys? That this isn't the only shooting RPG that we're going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what mindset you have to be in to uh, make a video game out of that. But um, yeah, we have a lot more on the list. Custer's Revenge, 1982. Oh. Bro, we seen this one. Where the fuck did we see this shit at? Where did we see this shit at? Custer's Revenge was an adult action game published by American Multiple Industries for the Atari 2600. First released in November 1982, the game gained notoriety owing to its goal of being a na- What's crazy is, what's crazy is, like- it's like, why would you make this a game? That dementia kicking in. Native American woman. In the game, the player controls the character named Custer, depicted as a man wearing nothing but a cavalry hat, gloves, boots, and a bandana with a visible you know. Custer has to overcome wow. arrow attacks to reach the other side of the screen. His goal is to rape a Native American woman tied to a pole. Custer's Revenge quickly gained notoriety upon its release. It was sold in a sealed package labeled not for sale to minors and sold for $49.95 equivalent you have the audacity to make this game $49? $49. What the fuck? What the fuck? 
to $134 today. It acknowledged that children might nonetheless see the game. The game's literature stated, if the kids catch you and should ask, tell them Custer and the Maiden are just dancing. Women's rights groups criticized the game, stating that it was a simulation of other groups such as Women Against Pornography, Native American spokespersons, and critics of the adult video game industry in general protested about the content of the game. Activists tried pressuring legislators to outlaw the game, which Oklahoma City, home to the large Native American population, did. The focused media attention generated publicity for the game and caused it to sell approximately 80,000 copies, twice as many as the company's other video games. American multiple industries responded with, quote, Our object is not to arouse, our object is to entertain. When people play our games, we want them smiling, we want them laughing. The game's designer, Joel Miller, said Custer was, quote, seducing the maiden and that she was a willing participant. By April 1983, the They just be lying like shit, boy. Game was withdrawn from circulation. I may have blurred it. I'm sorry for that. But like, I am not risking anything, it, especially with a topic like this. I know I'm just going to be blurring pixels on the screen. Sorry, you guys are, might have to deal with some blur, but I hope you can still tell what's going on and being talked about. That is Hatred, actually... 2015. What is important is what I'm going to do. When I think of the most controversial video game, I think of Hatred. Hatred is a gruesome shooter game presented in an isometric perspective, in which the playable character and protagonist is a mass murdering villain who, quote, hates this world and the human worms feasting on its carcass, and what? embarks on a genocide crusade against the entire human race. The player can carry three weapons and an assortment of grenades, as well as drive some vehicles. Health is regenerated by performing glory kills on people. This was a rare case of a video game being given the adults only ESRB rating. Games wow. with the AO rating are considered by the board to be suitable for players ages 18 and over. Most retailers refuse to stock AO rated games and Twitch actually bans all AO games. They don't want- Seriously? What? I See, that's something I did not know. Wow. Okay. ...and associate with that. The only mainstream platform to allow AO games is Steam, but even Steam hides the AO games by default. JFK Reloaded, 2004. JF now, whoever made this, you know you dead wrong. You know you dead wrong for that. JFK Reloaded? Yo, what are these games? Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, they know they dead wrong. JFK Reloaded is a 2004 first-person shooter game developed and published by Traffic Games. It simulates the 1963 assassination of John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States. The player, controlling Lee Harvey Oswald, oh is tasked with recreating the three shots fired at Kennedy and gains higher scores the more accurately they lined up with the report. Shots can be reviewed in slow mo- Are you serious? You get a better score for how accurate you are? You serious? Are you dead ass? That is actually insane. Oh my God. That is insane motion and from multiple viewpoints. As Kennedy's motorcade passes on Delay Plaza, the player has to take three shots at the president with their sniper rifle. They gain points based on how closely these shots match the Warren Commission's report. The first has to miss the car, the second hit Kennedy in the neck, and John Cannoli, the governor of Texas, in the chest, and the third fatally hit Kennedy in the head. The perfect score is 1000. While the game does not halt the player from pursuing alternative scenarios, the score is deducted when the player goes off script from the did you see his fucking head explode? Did you see this nigga's head? Did you see a chunk of this nigga's head? Just, oh my god events such as hitting Jacqueline Kennedy, the first lady. JFK Reloaded was denounced by several public figures like David Smith, a spokesman for Ted Kennedy, stating simply that it's despicable. Politician John Kasich discussed the game in his book, Stand for Something, The Battle for America's Soul, in a segment about graphic content and mainstream video games. I'm not gonna lie, the game actually has some really cool bullet physics. It reminds me of like Sniper Elite physics. I don't know if you guys have ever played that game, but it's very similar. I mean, obviously, I don't have to explain why this is controversial. <laughs> for some of them, I do have to explain why they're controversial, but this one is like... You could just tell them. Jesus. Silent Hill Homecoming, 2008. I'm sure we've all played or at least heard of the Silent Hill series. Yeah, I've heard of Silent Hill. And I'm still pissed PT was canceled. Fun fact, I actually use the PT soundtrack sometimes for my videos in the background. Homecoming was the sixth installment in the Silent Hill series and follows the journey of Alex Shepard, a soldier returning from war to his hometown where he finds his town in disarray and his younger brother is missing. As he continues on his search to find his younger brother, he discovers more about the Order, a cult, as well as she bad, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. Stop. Right now.
tells the town's history and his own past. Okay, a Silent Hill game. Why is this on the list? The game is literally banned in Australia. Apparently, it's due to extreme violence, but more specifically, a certain scene in the game. This scene shows Alex having a drill forced into his right eye socket, causing a lot of blood to spew out. I couldn't find an HD version of this scene, since the scene is a quick time event. Everyone just posted what happens when you succeed. I only found this extremely pixelated version. Oh my god! Oh my god! Left Behind Eternal Forces 2006 Left Behind Eternal Forces is a Christian strategy game. In the single player campaign, the player controls the Tribulation Force, a Christian group in a post-rapture New York City who are combating the influence of the global community peacekeepers, the world government led by the Antichrist Nicolae <laughs> Carpathia. The, the player directs the actions of the main characters and the Tribulation Forces unit in an effort to defeat the global community peacekeepers by converting neutral and global community allied civilians to their side and only using lethal force against the Antichrist army forces when necessary, but the player's main goal is to use conversion rather than violence, only resorting to combat when necessary, since killing causes the quote spirit level of the player's units to drop. This was a very controversial game as it quite literally is telling you if you don't believe in Christianity or are an atheist, well, you're wrong. Other than that, the game's reviews are extremely negative. Like, it's just a bad game in general. That which is, is going to be a common thing in these games. Most of them. Not all of them. Silent Hill's great. I just want to make that clear. Except the next one. The next one, uh, if you're a lonely teenager that's a guy, or at least you like girls, you're going to love the next one. Dead or Alive Extreme Series, oh my 2003 God. till now. The regular Dead or Alive games are a part of the fighting series that began in 1996 developed by Team Ninja and Tecmo. The game okay. always had very, uh, jiggly physics. What the shit? What the shit? Wait, wait, wait 1996 a developed minute. by Team Ninja and Tecmo. The game always had very- Hold on chat, wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, cause y'all have to see this shit. I'm a, let me move my, hold on. <clears throat> let me move my cam and let me move this real quick. Y'all gotta see this shit, hold on. <laughs> hold on. The game always had very, uh, jiggly- <laughs> Did y'all see that shit? Wait a minute chat, did you- <laughs> Always had very uh yo please get the fuck out of here with this nonsense man oh my god that is actually hilarious jiggly physics so much so that in 2003 the spin-off series dead or alive extreme beach volleyball was created those games are exactly that the girls from the game playing volleyball in little clothing with a lot of jiggle physics as the years went on well graphics only improved we went from polygons to this now as one can imagine the games received much backlash for being sexist and being a way to just uh creep on girls i guess the backlash in the u.s was so loud that the game developers released an official statement on twitter explaining that they will not release the game anywhere except asia because they respect wow. the different global audiences and the game was still released in the u.s the very next year the <laughs> VR they said don't even worry about it we're not releasing it to y'all don't you ain't got nothing to worry about but this game don't <laughs> version of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 takes things to the next level. You can get as up close and personal to the girls as you want. And let me what? tell you, it is graphic. Like the girls just sit there and you could, like I said, you just get as close as you want. Dude, I found a playlist of uh, this user on YouTube, I guess, that would upload getting up close and personal to every girl in the game and every single video on that playlist is age restricted and the comments are just calling him out for being like a weirdo again this is why oh, some wow. clips are blurred if you're a fan of the dead or alive series let me know if this spin-off dead or alive extreme Wait, so what's the do you account? think it's misogynistic Stop. or sexist or at the very least creepy let me know your thoughts i really want to know the dead or alive fan base's thoughts on that spin-off this video is sponsored by atlas vpn get your money but i'm gonna skip Ethnic Cleansing 2002 Now this one is self-explanatory when it comes to why it's controversial. Ethnic Cleansing is a first-person shooter video game for Windows computers created by the American White Supremacist and Hate Organization National Alliance. It's a unique name. As part of a quote race war, the player controls a neo- skinhead or a clansman and is tasked with killing what? stereotypical African, Mexican, and Jewish enemies. Nigga, did you see- and is tasked with killing stereotypical African Mexican. Bruh, bruh. Look what they did to my nigga, man. Look what, bro. Look what they 
shit did to them, bro. That's crazy. Mexican and Jewish enemies. I don't even know if you can find download links for this, but I don't even know if I want to include this in the video, actually. If you guys are watching this, then I guess I made it in. I don't even want to talk about this one anymore. That Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Hot coffee mod. 2004. San Andreas. I gotta finish San Andreas. I'm gonna finish that bitch on the channel. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna give a, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna finish it. I just gotta beat that one level, bro. That shit pissed me off so bad. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the most iconic game in the GTA franchise, was not only controversial due to the fact that you play as a criminal that can cause a rampage at any given moment, but also due to something that never made its way into the final release of the game. Hot Coffee is an unofficial name for a minigame. The minigame is not playable through normal means. The game must be modded in order to access it. When enabled, Hot Coffee allows the protagonist, CJ, to have animated sex with an in-game girlfriend where you can control his movements. According to the GTA they was moving like that with San Andre- Bruh. Stay wiki. Before development concluded, Rockstar Operations Director Jennifer Colby warned Dan Hauser that explicit sexual content would likely bring restrictive assessments from rating boards, harming retail sales. The minigame could not be fully removed, so the content was hidden from players using cutscenes. Data miners discovered evidence of explicit sexual content after San Andreas was released for the PlayStation 2 in October 2004, and confirmed its wow. existence when the Windows version was released on June 7, 2005. Modern Patrick Wildenborg released a patch to unlock the minigame two days later. This led to San Andreas becoming embroiled in controversy. Within a month of the patch's release, the ESRB and Australian OFLC re-evaluated San Andreas' content rating. The ESRB re-rated the game to adults only, leading several retailers to pull it from the shelves. It's really rare, but there are some San Andreas boxes that do have the adult-only ESRB rating, wow. and those can be found on eBay, while the OFLC issued a refused classification banning it from sale in Australia. Rockstar recalled San Andreas is banned in Australia. What the fuck? That is actually crazy. But wait, we played San Andreas on Twitch. What? All retail copies of San Andreas and released a new version that blocked access to Hot Coffee by the end of 2005 and oh. issued an official patch for existing owners to prevent access. The Hot Coffee code remains in all versions of San Andreas but takes more effort to restore due to missing models and animations. In August 2005, Rockstar North released an official cold coffee patch for the PC version of the game and re released San Andreas with the Hot Coffee scenes removed, allowing the game to return to its rated M for mature oh, rating. Oh, okay. Damn, that's crazy. Border Patrol, 2002. Back in the just the names of these shits is so racist. Just the names of these shits is so racist. Oh my god. Oh wow. This is crazy. Ding. <sighs> Oh my god. Border Patrol, 2002. Back in the Flash player days, many games were being created daily, and most of them were extremely fun. I can't mention Flash games without giving a shout out to Newgrounds and Con. Hey, and Newgrounds was that shit, boy. I'll play plenty of Flash games on Newgrounds, boy. Any unblocked game website that I would go on when I was bored using a Chromebook in class. But with so many games being made, it makes sense that some would cross the line. Or oh, I should course. say, cross the border. Am I gonna get canceled for that one? Te prometo yep. que soy mexicano. Lo prometo. Border Patrol is a flash based game that lets players shoot at Mexican immigrants as they try to. Border Patrol is a flash-based game that lets players shoot at Mexican immigrants as they try to cross the border into the United States. The game's opening. What the fuck? What are, what are we? Why are y'all like this? Who's making these games? Uh, somebody, yo. Screen states, there's one simple rule. Keep them out at any cost. In Border Patrol, players are told to target one of three immigrant groups, portrayed in a negative stereotypical way as the figures rush past a sign that reads, Welcome to the United States. Wow. The immigrants are very, uh, I guess... Nigga said, Majin said, Link, what kind of majexican are you? Where you want the link to play this? Stereotypical? Honestly, it's just a very racist game against Mexicans. Bone Town, 2008. Bone Town is an what? adult action adventure video game developed and published by American Studio D Dub Software. Released for Microsoft Windows on November 12, 2008. What in the fuck? Is that a fucking crack pipe? Is that a is that crack? That's a fucking crack pipe, chat. I. Eight. The game follows a player as he can completes missions and has sex with various women. A man in a suit approaches and explains that he is part of an organization called The Man. He warns the player that public indecency is illegal and if the player is caught he will be arrested. The player goes through the game completing missions in the style of like the GTA games. Missions include participating in 
graphic films and beating up someone who believes they are Jesus. Women are scattered throughout the city and the player is able to have sex with any of them. Sex can either be for the player's enjoyment or to recover in-game health, depending on the position selected. The game requires the player to match the desires of the women in order to last as long as possible. Nigga, is that Walter White? What the fuck? Man, what is happening, Mr. White? <laughs> VTech Rampage, 2007. I don't want to talk a lot about this one, so I'm gonna try to make this one quick. Only three weeks after the Virginia Tech incident, Ryan Lamborn from- Three weeks? Yo, these niggas don't let the, like, bro. Damn, these niggas shout out, they, they, they did a school shooting? Let me make a video game about it. What the fuck is wrong with you niggas? Australia created a spin-off RPG. And while doing research, man, fuck this guy. The source I read said he only did it just to be offensive and he thought it was funny. That's it. That's why he recreated this Virginia Tech incident and made it into a, I guess, a funny video game for him. The first mission of the game requires you to kill... I'm not even going to say her name, but it's like an, the actual first victim of the shooting. Not only that, but as I was wow. reading, in 2013, this same idiot released another game based on Handy Suck. I'm not going to say it, so I changed the first letters. Are you serious? Wow, this nigga. Because I'm not trying to get demonetized, but yeah, he made another video game like that. And uh, honestly, fuck him and let's move on. Blay, 2006. Blay is a 3D Eroge video game. Is that, wait a minute, is the game actually called? Blay. That's what the game is actually called? Who the fuck is doing this? Who's doing this? 2006. Blay is a 3D Eroge video game made by Illusion, released on April 21st, 2006 in Japan. Eroge means Japanese erotic video game. The game centers around a male character that you control, whose goal is to a mother and her two kids. You can't make this shit up, chat. Specifically, her two daughters. Three years after its initial release, the game garnered international attention and controversy for its content, resulting in it being banned in several countries. In story mode, the player controls a sex- I won't be able to make it. A huge thunderstorm. And I won't get stuck. Okay, gotcha. Offender with a history of previous arrests. The protagonist SAs two minors and an adult woman, and the minor's ages are 12 years old and 17 years old. After the player finishes- all three women, they unlock free play mode. Following its release, the game was banned in several countries, excluding Japan. In fact, articles in defense have also been written, many noting that rape is considered a lesser crime than murder, yet there are thousands of legal video games in which the goal is to kill enemies. Yeah, that was people's argument. They would be like, it's not as bad as killing people. So all the Call of Duty games are worse than this. Illusion's response to the controversy wow. was basically, hey, it's okay in Japan. So if you guys don't like it, well, we're in Japan. As an immediate aftermath, several Roger publishers doubled down and studios began to ban foreigners from their official websites. They really like what they do, man, and they, they will stand for it. This is probably the worst one on the list and it was last. This list was a nine in any order, this, this just ended this, up being last. This is if you guys enjoyed crazy. the video, make sure you leave a like. And if you guys like the content, it would be awesome if you could subscribe. If you don't want to, that is completely okay with me. And make sure to I'm stream subscribed. Cherry Soda when it is out. Please be there for the premiere. I Again, it is tough. February 24th me, at 6 games. p.m. PST. Convert that to whatever time zone you're in. So it could be easier for you. Literally just turn on post notifications. You'll get a notification on your phone right when it's like about to premiere. After Cherry Soda, literally back to morbid videos. And uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time I upload. That'd be it, man. People are weird though, to be honest. People are, uh, people are weird, man. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. People are weird, but that'd be it nonetheless.